What's going on everybody? This is your real estate mate. Look, I am a real estate broker in Dubai. I've been here for nearly two years and my first year was extremely overwhelming. My first couple of months were extremely overwhelming. And this video would be an uncut version of me going through the details that I've jotted down on the piece of paper here in front of me to explain to everyone who's doing their research of moving to Dubai for the first time, um, you know, things that you need to consider, f you know, what type of money do you need to move here to really sustain and just keep yourself afloat for the first couple of months or maybe for the first year, just to make sure that you're well prepared and you're not sucked into the glitz and the glam of what the city has to offer. Nothing wrong with the glitz and the glam that this city has to offer but it can be overwhelming at times. So I'm here in my office, um, Sheikh Said Road, which is the main road that runs through to Abu Dhabi to Dubai is right here next to me with the metro. I've got views of uh, Palm Jumeirah alone in the office. Um, so I'm just gonna take this time to run through a couple of details uh, with you guys. So I don't wanna miss anything, so I did make the notes. Just to give you some background, I am from South Africa. I started in real estate back in 2017 when um, my life story is pretty much out there on Facebook and everything that I went through to find real estate and real estate really actually found me. Um, so yeah, started in 2017, always knew that I was meant for great things, always had New York as sort of a city where I wanted to, to go to and, and, and do real estate in. Obviously following influencers like Frederick and Ryan Surhant, who I look up to tremendously, just seeing the sort of lifestyle that they, they have because of real estate, I always knew that I was, I was meant for more never knowing really how challenging more and more and more could be but i know that i have a gift and i know that i am meant to go through the seasons that i need to go through experience what i needed to go through look in my life i've never traveled my family was never in a position to go overseas see and see other cities see other countries i'm pretty much in my immediate family the only person who has ever moved out of the country never seen anything except South Africa. And I got a call, I saw a video online uh, on Facebook by South Africans that are in, in Dubai in real estate and it was a recruitment video. So I saw this recruitment video and I was very, very curious to know what it's like, but not too serious because I was on a good wicket at Champion Real Estate with my business partner, Nicolene, who to this day, we've for the last two years, we've still been talking every single week because just such good friends. Um, so I saw this line, I saw this ad, I was like, cool, hey, who handed? Actually, speak Afrikaans to somebody who lives outside the country, who handed? Tell me more about this opportunity. Jumped on a Zoom call uh, because this is another South African. I could find a, a lot of relevance in her backstory and their experience. And um, it was very intriguing to me, but it just didn't feel like the the right thing to do. About a couple of weeks passed, like two weeks passed, and I got a call from the CEO from this company who said, look, had a look, like Anisha shared your uh, profile with me, feel like you'll be a really good fit. Uh, we are employing at that stage, they were employing a lot of South Africans to come through. So I think they believe that we are hardworking. Um, and it just tickled my fancy a little bit more. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. and you know, the thing that I realized when you're thinking about moving into a different country, wherever it is, is that those things happen fairly quickly. Depending on the season that you are in life, it happens very, very quickly where you just, you're ready to go. You pack up, you, bu you book your flight ticket, and you're out of there. So this was during 2021 uh, in July. So we still had quarantine to do. So I went to Zanzibar for my quarantine. So yeah, like I said, we uh, I went to Zanzibar for, for quarantine. Uh, it was between Namibia and Zanzibar that I had an option. But when I wanted to book my flight ticket, uh, Namibia closed down and they weren't taking anybody into quarantine there anymore. I wanted to, s to see Namibia. I've never been to Namibia, but still haven't been. And I, I will definitely go to see Namibia at one stage. So I went to Zanzibar. 
like I said, I've never traveled in my life. So I take the longest flight ever thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go cheapest chips and I'm not going to spend too much. If it takes 24 hours to get there, I don't really care. It was about a 12 hour uh, trip. Um, the flight was great. Uh, you know, it, it was such a good, good, good experience for me. And I also picked up a lot of uh, connections and friendships for the two weeks that I stayed in Zanzibar. I became well acquainted with uh, Stone Town. I lived in Stone Town. I didn't want to, you know, live in a resort because when you're in a resort, you don't really get to experience the Stone Town life. Uh, resorts were also just too expensive for me. I wasn't going there for a holiday. Uh, I was going there to quarantine, so I did everything like super cheap. Found the cheapest um, backpacker to stay at, and. I can't remember what it cost me because it's almost two years ago, but I could remember that it's the the um, currency is like shilling or something, Tanzanian shilling. So it was it was really cheap to stay there, and um, it was good to get the experience and experience the culture of of, of Zanzibar in Stone Town. Um, had interesting food and uh, decided very very early to just stick to margarita pizzas, go to Ocean Basket, um, and drink. Pepsi, um, Coke Zero, and coffee, and just normal stuff like quesadillas and mints, because um, some of the food is very, very interesting and very, very weird at times. Anyway, so I got to Dubai uh, the 5th of August, so it was the last two weeks of July. The 4th of August, I got my flight out of, uh, of Zanzibar, and I landed in... Um, in Dubai on the 5th. So I was only meant to start the next week, but I decided, look, I'm gonna suit up and I'm gonna go to the office. I rocked up and Anisha was like, what are you doing here? You only New staff is always starting on Monday, but since you are here, just get stuck into it. So I'm not gonna go through my real estate journey, starting in real estate in Dubai, because that's not the purpose of this video, but I can tell you that I'm very, very, very happy that I, that I made this decision. Definitely not where I want to be, um, spiritually, emotionally, financially, just yet, but the other elements that this city brings in terms of opportunity, in terms of safety, in terms of possibilities and op yeah, opportunities, again, is just tremendous. It's good enough for me to stay through the, the challenging seasons, because I know once you get through those seasons, those seasons are there for a reason. Uh, you would be able to, to you know, achieve so much more in a shorter period of time than I would in a lifetime in South Africa. Like, 100%. Like, the stories and people that I'm surrounded with here are so tremendously su successful doing exactly what I'm doing. Um, everyone's background and, and stories and dynamics are different, and some people achieve... X amount or X type of lifestyle very quicker than you do or you are at a different space and level at where somebody else is. So there's always a com comparison, you know, it's sort of the thief of, of joy or it could be sort of the, the thing that gives you perspective of what you can be grateful for in your own life. Um, but anyway, so let's get stuck into like the first journey where I think you would go through as well. I think a lot of people go through the same thing is where they get here and they're not too sure that, you know, did I make the right decision? Um, am I following the right process? Um, you know, am I doing this, the, the, the thing that I need to do to, you know, to, why does everything feel so uncomfortable? Um, and I just want to go through that process so that if you know that you're following this roadmap, that you're on the right, on the right path. So coming to Dubai, obviously, you need to have a visitor visitor visa. So if you already have a, a, a job um, waiting for you, it's easier. But you are also in a position where if you want to come find a job, that you can uh, apply for a visit visa online. Um, just reach out to people on South Africa, uh, Safas in Dubai, on the Facebook group, just to make sure that you're not falling in any traps. Because I went to Google and I googled a visa for Dubai and Emirates visa came up and I thought that Emirates visa is you know the same business as Emirates airline which it isn't it turned out I tremendously overpaid for my visa 
um, at the time I had enough cash, so I was just like, just get it done, get it done, let me just go. Um, but I tremendously overpaid for, for the visa, and there was also this COVID insurance thing uh, that I tremendously overpaid. And after the fact, I went to read uh, the reviews of this company, and it was just ridiculous how expensive they were compared to other options that were out there. So don't go with Emirates Visa because it's not linked to Emirates Airline. Um, I'm super happy to say that don't do that because it was ridiculous and I don't even care if anyone who works there ever sees this. I need, I need a refund of some sort. Um, anyway, so just reach out to me or reach out to people that you've seen live in Dubai and uh, we've all got the connections. So don't feel like you need to figure this thing out on your own. So a visa, I'm not gonna run into costs right now because these things change all the time. Some costs I will get into, but the visa costs change all the time. So it depends on the duration of the, the visa that you chose and, and you chose to stay here, etc. and the renewals, etc. Because if you have a 90 day visa and uh, for some reason you need to just renew that, you can while you live in Dubai, you can renew your visit visa, you can renew and renew and renew until such time that you have an employment visa because that's what we need to get. It's like you come here and uh, you reach certain targets or if you're in sales, then you qualify, then your company will give you a vis uh, uh, an actual employment visa that's valid for two years. Um, the reason that you need to reach certain certain performances is because imagine you're running a sales business of your own and you bring people in from all over the world and you pay for a visa for them to stay here and they leave your company and then it costs you like 10, 11,000 dirham and that's times five if you're in the RAND currency. So they pay that 50,000 or 25,000 RAND for a visa for somebody to work for you and then they leave two weeks later because it's just too hard for them. It's just too risky for the company. Uh, but when you are coming over and you find a job where you are paid a salary, you do get an employee vi um, employment visa that the company pays for. You go through your medical test just to make sure that you're not bringing any illnesses into the country um, and that you don't have HIV, unfortunately. You can't be here if, if you have HIV. Um, they will deport you if they see that in your medicals. Um, so they do a, a blood test, a lung test, not a lung test, a lung x-ray, um, and then you get approved, then you get uh, your Emirates ID, and you can't do anything without your Emirates ID. You can't open a bank account, you can't uh, you know, buy a car, you can't, do, can't rent uh, a property, so you need all of those things. But what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because when you come here, you need to rent a place to stay. So that's the second thing. So first thing is visa, you need to get that. Uh, but not Emirates Visa, just ask somebody that you know who lives in Dubai um, to refer you to somebody who does, who does visas. So the first place that you need to find then is accommodation. So your first month you'll probably live in a hotel apartment, which would also be good for you because when you come to Dubai you need to work 24-7. And when I say 24-7, you, you're working 24-7. Right, you, it's it's not back home. It's not where you can take take things easy, and you've got, you know, all of these um, UIF, and the, you know, it's it's just not a comfortable thing to be in when you move to a new city. It's uncomfortable. It's so so difficult. It's so uncomfortable, especially when you come alone. I came alone. My wife stayed at home uh, for another three to four months, which was a blessing in disguise, um, because the first few months were tremendously difficult for me. And I couldn't imagine just having her year while I'm going through a spiral like that. So you'll live in a hotel apartment. You can look at Al Khuri Executive Residences, which is close to the city. But there are so many um, hotel apartments online that you can that you can actually just check out and see what is within your affor affordability range. Um, Rove is another hotel apartment service provider. Um, they've got multiple locations all over. Locations that you would want to stay at is probably you know depending on where you need to work you need to find something that's close to work but if you want to go cheap you probably won't stay close to work because most businesses are within the central hubs and within the central hubs it's extremely expensive to live there even for short-term rental at any time of the year even if it's during summer especially during winter the prices do escalate three four five times higher than what they are in the summer times so you probably live outside the city 
we'll say, in the desert and then travel in and out. Traveling is pretty easy. Uh, the um, public transport is very effective here. It's very safe. It's, it was really weird for me to experience that uh, for myself, but taxis, um, cab, taxi cabs, and um, public transport and the metro, the train, is very clean, very affordable to, to get by. So feel, you can feel totally comfortable in, um, in using public transport here. But your first thing would be hotel apartment, and you'll probably want to you know, stay in that for as long as, possi as you possibly can. After that, you'll go into room share. Where you work, everyone here in Dubai, are, they're trying to make money, and they're trying to stay alive, and they're trying to build a new life for themselves. So it's not weird. It's not a, it's not a weird conversation to have with someone saying, like, listen, hotel apartments costing me way too much money. Um, I need to make a plan. Like, where do you live? Like, do you want to share a place? Do you want to share a room? Like, it's weird because where I come from, people sharing a room, it's like a really weird thing to do, especially if you're, if you're privileged um, in the way that we were. Um, asking somebody to share a room with you is like weird, but think about it when you go to Amsterdam, when you go to New York, when you go to London, like th that's totally normal to have roommates. So find uh, your crew, find people who you work with who maybe are looking for roommates to live with so that that helps them with their rental as well so you can split the rental and live a very, very uh, primitive life, if, if that's the right word, a very you know, like dull life. You, you're not going to live in a three-bedroom house with a double garage and, and pay rent. And like That's just not going to happen for you if you're coming here uh, from semi-privileged, not wealthy, but coming over here to start a new life from the beginning. So get that out of your mind. Don't be, don't be superficial. Don't think that it's going to be glitz and glam from the beginning because it's not going to be very, very humble beginnings. And that really builds up a really good story for yourself to tell. Hotel apartment, check. Room share, check. Then the best way to get around second to the metro and public transport is having a vehicle. Having a vehicle helps you to understand the layout of the city, uh, especially if you're in sales, uh, like being in real estate. You've got to know what's happening in all the locations. And as you drive around in the city, you get to know sort of the access roads, why people want to stay close to this road and that road. And, you know, sort of the locations of different communities, and um, that helps you with, with, with your job. So it'll accelerate uh, your success if you do have a vehicle. To rent a vehicle, uh, you can go to Karasti, so car, I, Karas, so cars, car, car, AS, I, Karasti, um, or you can go onto the local app that's called Kareem, which you also order food, order groceries, and all that stuff on. Kareem, they do car rentals as well, so you can rent a car there. Cost for a car is around 1,700 minimum, 1,700 dirham a month, minimum, 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 minimum. So if you can get around by just using public transport, it'll probably cost you half of that, depending on how much you travel up and down, okay? Um, so that's car rental fuel, tremendously mu much cheaper than back, uh, back home where I'm from. Um, so a Picanto would be 100 dirham a week for a full tank. And then you're a real estate agent jotting up and down all across the city, 100 dirham a week, maybe 120 if it gets to that. Um, fuel, room share, food. Food doesn't need to be expensive. Um, I ate quite expensive when I got here because I'm very independent. I don't like to ask people for shit. Um, sorry, don't like asking people for stuff. Um, you know, like I'm giving you the advice here to speak to people. That's not what I did. And if I just had gone and do that, I might have, you know, persevered a little bit better with the money that I brought here um, and done things a little bit differently. So in terms of food, you get ready-made meals from Spinney's. Um, everyone says like Spinney's is expensive. Spinney's is like Woolworths. But as you by now know, some other shopping stores in South Africa is more expensive than Woolies, so is it really that expensive? Um, we get ready-made meals, lasagna, um, chicken, full chicken, you know, everything that you can think about to have a really good meal. You can get for like 17 dirham a meal. Um, so you will have probably, if you're really skint, if you really don't have any money, uh, you'll probably have two meals a day, which you'll skip breakfast, only have lunch, 
and, and dinner. So what I used to do is I bought uh, vegetables. So they have this really good broccoli salad with, ma with bacon, so it's bacon, um, really good broccoli salad and a full chicken. So I had this chicken for lunch and then I had the other half of the chicken for dinner. So that's what I did. And then obviously your Coke Zero and your water, et cetera. But that, those things are really, really cheap here. Um, so if you, you, you don't have to eat expensive. For the first night when I came here, um, I wanted to spoil myself and I spent 220 dirham on a meal for one three course. I was like, this is a bit expensive. If you have to calculate it back to my, to my uh, currency, it was very expensive. Um, people were like, why the hell would you do that? I was just caught up in the lights. Uh, I had a Burj Khalifa view. I had a, a fountain view. It was, it was a great experience. Ended up to be a great story, great story to tell. Um, let me just get into the rental amounts. Um, if you want to rent an apartment, now you've gone through your process and you've got your visa with your, with your company and every company has to give you a visa. Um, they can't hold your passport for anything. Um, you've done your Emirates ID and you want to rent uh, a posse. So you can rent if you're alone or if you're a couple, you can rent a studio apartment for 35 to 40,000 dirham and you have to pay those, those fees, you have to pay with checks. So you get a checkbook when you open up your bank account because you can't open a bank account without having an Emirates ID. So you go to Emirates MBD or FAB or Abu Dhabi Bank or whatever the case is and you open up and you get a checkbook and you write out a check um, for your rent, which is was a weird thing. Like I didn't even know how to complete a, a checkbook. Like yeah, I didn't know. Um, so you write out your checkbook and the checks are usually four checks a year, five or six checks a year, depending on how the market is, depending on what your landlord wants. My landlord wanted four checks for the year, so that was great. I'm paying for one bedroom 35 minutes out of the city in town square. I'm paying around 36 or 35, 36 thousand dirham for the year, which is extremely cheap. Really, every time I tell somebody what I pay, they're like, what? How do you pay that little? because uh, you live further out f of the city uh, in the desert and um, you get you get away with very cheap stuff and then again like fuel and car and all that stuff is needed if you live out there public transport is a bit iffy um, to live out that side um, 35 so I pay around 8,600 dirham per quarter that I pay for for my rent then I also have the Diwa which is the electricity and water bill at around 250 dirham per per month then I have uh, my do bill, which is Wi-Fi, which is around 200 dirham per month. And then uh, I also have a chiller. So you pay for your air condition in addition to the other fees uh, and bills. You have an air conditioner bill. And I don't know what it is. I can't remember. Like I want to say I haven't paid for it. I paid for it once. So I think I'm going to have a very hefty bill when I'm done with my rental because I need to just squash all of that. But I think it's around 500 dirham a month if you have it on 24-7, which we had it on 24-7 in our first year of living in Dubai because it was just tremendously hot, like crazy, crazy hot. Um, I don't think you climatize ever, ever. It doesn't happen. It really doesn't happen. Um, what else is there? I mean, I've had some people reach out to me on my YouTube channel and uh, then found my Instagram channel, then, then found my, my uh, cell phone number. So you can do that as well. Just give me a call, shoot me a message over WhatsApp or DM me, shoot a comment, like ask me questions here about living in Dubai, if you're thinking about it, what didn't I tackle, what do you want me to speak about? And um, I'm just here to really help you get through all the details to help you make this decision. Um, this, the other day, JP called me, she said, I just found your number, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah, man, my number's out there for people to contact me. And um, the thing is, like, if you come to Dubai f with a salary, like you have a job and a salary and you're still thinking about it, why, why, like why? You need, what you need to live here is 15,000 dirham, to 12 to 15,000 dirham a month. That's what you need as a couple, as two people. Then you'll still be able to save a little bit. You need 12 to 15,000 dirham a month. So if you have a salary that offers you that, 
you would be able to rent a place, have a car, pay, pay, um, pay fuel, have nice food, uh, um, have a barbecue uh, tw twice, a, twice a month, and um, you'll be able to save a little bit of money as well. And um, yeah, groceries is around 300, 400 dirham a week. That's a lot. Um, 300, 400 dirham a week for groceries. Milk, milk. I almost spoke Afrikaans, milk, um, everything that you need. You can tell I don't do the shopping. My wife does the shopping. Mashallah, my wife is here, so she does the shopping. Um, but it's around 300, 400 dirham a week. Then we've got those other expenses like takeaways because we live close to Hardee's and KFC. Um, and there's a nice restaurant in, in uh, Town Square as well. So, you know. It's, it's a nice life out there, but we want to move closer to the city, so we are going to be paying a lot more money for, for rent very, very soon. I want to live closer to the Palm Jumeiro because uh, that's where I work, that's where I sell real estate, so um, I need to be closer to this side. When you live out in the desert, it doesn't feel like you're living the Dubai life. I think like we're progressing into the stage where we want to experience Dubai for Dubai and what it has and what it is to offer as well. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to run through those uh, with your family. Like even if your family is thinking about moving to Dubai and you want to buy a property, uh, like obviously reach out to me. Um, but if you want to have a family unit Zoom meeting, just reach out to me. Let's, let's do that meeting with your entire family. If, that, if they don't understand why you want to move to Dubai, and let's get on a call. Like, let's just get on a call with the entire family, you know what I mean? Um, so that's it for this video. Um, last thing, I always looked at content like this online on YouTube and I thought why aren't these people doing this outside because there's skyscrapers outside and there's great views outside. I mean, it is nice, but it's hot. It's like almost over 40 degrees, which is ridiculous. That's why we're not outside. That's why influencers influencers are making content in hotels and in their rooms and in their offices all the time because it's so flipping hot. So I guess the next video would be coming very soon talking to you very candidly like this uh, about reasons why not to move to Dubai because they definitely are. If you're looking for reasons not to move to Dubai, it's fucking hot. It's, it's too hot here. Like it's mad. It's, in, it's mad 24 seven, like crazy. Um, all the cultures that are here. Um, if you don't get along with people that are not uh, a cultural choice for you to hang out with, don't come to the city. Um, if people talking other languages irritate you, like don't come to the city. Um, if you're looking for long-term settlement, don't come to the city because this is short-term. I'm talking 10 years um, because you, you can get, I mean, if you, if you lose your job, you can't be here anymore. You know, like all of those things you need to consider. So I'm going to do a video on reasons why not to move to Dubai as well because I need to be very transparent with you um, because it's a big life decision. You uproot everything, especially if you have kids and you move to the city. It's big, big decisions. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is your real estate mate over and out. I'll catch you on the next video.